We're having a presentation tonight by um, Mr. Edward O'Malley from Gallagher Benefits. Yes, Mr. O'Malley is here to speak to the board about uh, our health insurance status uh, for the current year and looking forward to some strategies for our 21-22 uh, coverage. So Mr. O'Malley, the floor is yours. Good evening. Thank you so much uh, for the opportunity to speak to you tonight and bring you an update on where you are on one of the largest uh, uh, budget items that uh, the district has. Uh, let me try and share my screen here very quickly. Can everyone see that? Yes. All right, great. What I'd like to do if I could tonight is just uh, share with you a little bit uh, about the resources that Gallagher is bringing to bear for uh, the, the district, uh, run through a loss ratio report. The latest that we have is up through uh, 11120. We expect in the next week or so to have uh, December claims. I wanna share with you um, some de-identified high level claims both on the prescription and on the medical side. Talk to you a little bit about um, the renewal challenges that we're facing in the 7-1 renewal and what uh, we're gonna use to attack that in the way of marketing options. Um, we also uh, will share a little bit, uh, a little bit early on a self-funded feasibility study that our actuarial practice has um, put in place. Um, for the newest board members, they're welcome to the board. Um, uh, I wanted to tell you just a, a 30 seconds or so about Gallagher and what we do. Um, we are a family run business, but believe it or not, we have 35,000 employees around the world. Uh, we're a $7 billion uh, organization. Um, we're one of the only companies um, uh, that has received the world's most ethical companies designation uh, each of the last nine years. Um, we, we provide not only health and welfare, but analytics, human resource and compensation, um, well-being and engagement, and quite a number of additional services to our clients uh, throughout the United States and the rest of the world. The team that we have in place for Middletown Township that is serving them is myself. I'm the public entity practice leader um, for the, the uh, region. Um, we have Rachel Stipic, who's our senior client manager, Nick Popovich, who's our senior account manager, um, our executive team, Tom Belmont and Tamara Walton. Um, we have uh, an ERISA attorney, Beth Ulrich, who is assigned to assist us. And she joined us when we were hired by the district uh, a couple months back. We have a communications uh, practice um, led by Pepper Crash, John Majasic for voluntary benefits, and we also do benefits administration for the district and Becky Jo Malone handles that. Uh, we have a bunch of additional folks there um, and uh, they are all available. Um, one other person to uh, call out is Bonnie Antonelli. She runs our advocacy center, um, which is available. We have a 1-800 number that's direct uh, for Middletown's employees and their families. Uh, all your employees can call in when they have questions or need guidance on benefits in any uh, capacity. If they see something that uh, they don't understand on an explanation of benefits from your insurance carriers, um, they can call right in and automatically the benefits for uh, Middletown pop up. Touch a little bit on the loss ratio reports. And this, um, I, I, I really just wanna call out uh, Month by month, this is showing from December 19 through November of 20. And your uh, total contracts um, has been running pretty steadily, um, approximately 940, 950 throughout the year. Um, but here's the big number. These are the claims broken down by the contracts. Uh, your di direct access contract uh, right up at the top here has been uh, running fairly well. Um, the point of service plan, um, not so great. The PPO plan designed the same, but the prescription plan is, is really not running well at all. And that's gonna present some real challenges um, as we go for our 7-1 uh, renewal. Um, if you take a look here at this bottom line here, these are the combined loss ratios month by month. And you'll see um, starting uh, mid-year, um, we, we saw it 
tick up, which we would expect after um, uh, COVID-19 uh, sort of lessened. Um, but we're seeing here um, 91, 96, 110%, 101% um, for a blended number of 88%. Um, that uh, would scare the underwriters at Horizon who handles most of your program um, and would, would likely cause uh, an increase that would be uh, very challenging for the district to absorb. Some of the reasons that that's occurring are some of the high level claimants and these are all de-identified, de but we're, we're, we are seeing a tick up in large claims and um, nervous system, cancer, circulatory system. Um, this is not updated. I expect, as I said, I'll have an additional one in about a week that will give us some more information on large claims. We do, um, uh, in a fully insured arrangement, have the ability for them to throw out uh, claims above $250,000, but they do add them back in when they're doing the calculation for um, the final necessary renewal numbers. Um, these are your high level prescriptions and prescriptions is an area that you probably read about that um, if we're seeing a, a medical trend of six or 7%, we're seeing probably 50% higher in the prescription side of things. And, and some of the reasons for that is if you look at uh, Zyrem, uh, the second number here, there's four uh, prescriptions for $65,000. Most of the newer drugs that are coming out um, are cancer drugs and uh, a lot of them are biologics. Um, they are extremely expensive. And that's an area that's both a challenge and an opportunity as we go forward um, to the 7-1 renewal. A few of the things that we're looking at, as I said, the claims are running higher than expected. We, we would uh, hope that uh, you would have been um, on some of these later months uh, below 75, 80%. Um, and and uh, we're not seeing that. So that's gonna be a challenge. Um, the fully insured marketplace, uh, including Horizon, where you're buying your benefits today, uh, when they uh, apply trend, what they look at year over year and what they expect in uh, the next fiscal year of an increase, they're gonna be extremely conservative because no one really knows what's gonna happen once we get past this uh, higher uh, incidence of COVID-19. Is that gonna drive you know, uh, a lot of folks that have postponed uh, major surgeries and things of that nature? Um, they're not exactly sure where that's gonna land. So they're gonna be very conservative when they, when they come out with the renewal. In addition, uh, chapter 44 came into place effective January 1st of this year, the educator plan. Um, this district had um, significant movement into that plan. And you're probably aware that uh, uh, chapter 78, the old uh, model of employee contributions uh, was in effect for 10 years. That was based on what the premiums were. And um, under this new chapter 44, uh, the contributions are based on a salary. And that has caused a diminution in um, dollars to the district to help pay for uh, the benefit program. Uh, that lower contribution will have, definitely have a budget impact. And now we have a double whammy effective um, July 1st, there's gonna be a second mandated plan called the Garden State Plan which will only have providers in the state of New Jersey. Um, we expect that that will come in um, substantially cheaper than the educator's plan. Um, however, uh, it is limited and you do have um, a fair number of folks that use out of area uh, physicians and, and uh, facilities. So we're not sure how, that, how, how much uh, uh, penetration that that's gonna make, but we believe that more people will join the educator plan effective 7-1. And again, that will have a, an impact on your overall budget. A couple of the options that we'd like to attack, uh, and we've already started this process, is we're looking at the fully insured marketplace, all the commercial carriers that can replicate your plan design and meet your um, collective bargaining agreements uh, will be uh, uh, provided with claims data, census information, et cetera, and, and uh, uh, we will attempt to get uh, uh, quotations from each of those. We're also asking for both fully insured and self-funded plan designs, and uh, also looking at 
uh, all available third party administrators, including, including Horizon. Um, Brick Township, for example, Board of Education um, is uh, self-funded with Horizon. And they're just one of the many players that are in that marketplace. And there are some advantages and some disadvantages also uh, in uh, the fully insured uh, marketplace. There's also some uh, joint purchasing arrangements, uh, the health insurance funds in the state of New Jersey, which have been about, around about 25 years. Um, they've been very effective in um, self-funding, but pooling with other districts. And there, there's a large one uh, uh, throughout the state that has just under 100 school districts uh, participating in it. Uh, we have a number of our clients in there. I believe there's up to six right now. Um, so that's a viable option that we'll be looking at as well. I mentioned that our actuarial practice did um, a, a self-insured feasibility study, just taking a snapshot. And again, uh, we're gonna have to redo this as we go through it. But I just wanted you to um, see, um, this particular graph shows how many employers uh, uh, percentage-wise are self-funded by firm size. And this is not just um, in the public space, um, this is overall. But if you looked at 1,000 to 4,999, which you fall into, 85% of those groups are self-funded already. So there are some advantages there and, and uh, more flexibility that we'll talk about. Um, here's a, a, a bit of a grid, and, and I do apologize for not getting this up to you. I tried a number of times to get these to uh, the district office today, but uh, had technology problems. But um, you can see in the middle bars there, uh, the fully insured arrangement, and then the self-funded, self-insured arrangement. And it's really not self-insured because you typically, when you put these into place, buy two different kinds of stop-loss insurance both on an individual basis and on an aggregate basis. And um, again, we'll be, we'll be pulling together a number of these self-insured uh, proposals uh, and Horizon will be one of those, the current carrier. We wanna try, if at all possible, to, to minimize any noise. Um, you might recall for those folks that have been on the board for a while that um, the district moved to Benicard uh, to, to get some savings and that really caused some, di some disruption um, and we would try and mitigate that. Uh, we do um, geo access reports where we compare uh, networks for each of these vendors um, versus uh, where your folks are currently um, uh, seeking care, both from a professional standpoint and a facility standpoint. Um, just touch very briefly um, on some of the advantages. Um, the fully insured, you know, you're just basically paying a premium and the insurance company is assuming all of the risk. Um, that, that's one of the reasons why they manage the benefits, um, uh, you know, through a variety of tools that they have in place. Um, they handle most of the ACA reporting that's required. Um, uh, underwriting, as I said, is more conservative. There is a 3% premium tax that is paid on your premiums, and that would be uh, removed if you were to look at a self-funded option for the district. And there's a profit margin that is in the, in every, um, uh, fully insured plan. And uh, basically a margin is, you know, uh, funny money that they're looking there just to cover their, uh, their bottom lines. Uh, on the self-insured side, you're handling and holding your claim reserves. Uh, there's no premium taxes, um, so that would save a few points right off, off the get-go. Uh, there's more flexibility in negotiating um, uh, with the third-party administrators. There's no risk charge. And if your claims experience is good, you uh, uh, save those, those dollars. Um, the disadvantages that are involved is it is more work for the district um, uh, because there's a fluctuation in monthly funding. You're not just simply paying a premium, you're paying the claims cost plus the stop loss premiums. Um, and uh, the next line talks about purchasing stop loss to cap that liability. Um, you would be the fiduciary, except that in most cases, we would recommend that uh, the administrator, who's ever administering the plans, assume that and it's available at a very small fee. And the ACA reporting, there's a little bit more work on that uh, on the business office. Um, just wanted to show something. Um, uh, our, our underwriters looked at this um, uh, along with our actuaries and projected that in fiscal year 2021 to 22, um, these are what the numbers would look like 
And they estimate that there could be, a, you know, up to a five, little more than 5% saving. Um, and these are the reserves that uh, incurred but not yet paid, uh, $2.7 million. Uh, you would not have that obviously under here. You're paying uh, a premium and that covers all of your claims expense. So that is really it where we are. Um, as I said, we've, we've uh, started the process already with getting um, quotations in. Uh, we know that um, at the end of next month, uh, the business office has to put together uh, and submit to the uh, county offices uh, the first blush of a budget. Um, we are striving to have all the information available to you. It will not be a hard and fast number yet because it takes um, uh, a little bit longer to, to shake loose out of horizon um, what your actual renewal number will be. But again, we will, we will be able to give you some uh, very good estimates uh, to plug in for that first blush of the uh, uh, budget. And if I can, I'd just like to open it up to any questions that the board may have. Hi, Mr. O'Malley, how are you? It's Frank Capone. Good evening, Frank. How are you, sir? Good, good. I just want to circle back on two things. You were mentioning about the current RX prescription card, I think you said, is causing a little bit of a problem. Yes. That, that's like when you're talking problem, are we paying about 10, 20% more than normal? What kind of numbers are we talking about that we actually are incurring versus what we could be at? Well, um, the way that... I'm just gonna move back and share with you that prescription number again. Um, if you take a look here at this bottom line, Frank, it, it shows you, and, and we're just picking up mid-year because we moved it back to uh, Horizon. But if you look here, 72% in July, 105, 93%, 134, and that's 134% of what the district is paying in premiums, they're paying out in claims. And, um, what one of the advantages that we have if if we carve out the prescription is there is substantial dollars that are being um, uh, given back to clients that are self-funded in the form of rebates. Um, I have a district um, that I mentioned when when um, I last spoke with the board uh, that's about the same size, Lenape Regional District, um, uh, and uh, we put them into a self-funded arrangement. I guess about five years ago, and they are averaging about a million dollars in refunds. And our our actuaries took that into account. A large amount of whatever they save should be coming back in the form of rebates from the prescription. So that would bring that number down substantially below that 100%, Frank. Okay, great. And I mean, going off these numbers, it's somewhere in excess of almost a million dollars, would you say, or? Uh, yes, based on, on on your current spend, we could potentially see, you know, uh, anywhere from, I would say, close to a million dollars to a little bit more. Yeah. That's all from the Rx alone. That is correct. All right. Now, your opinion when you put a, it sounds like you're actually for self-funding in a way. I might be leaning that way myself. That's what I like about this. But what is your opinion, self-funding versus a general insurance going forward now you said it's about a million point five savings based on our current to the next year correct well that that uh, uh, a caveat to that uh, Frank would be simply that we don't know what's going to happen with this garden state plan and the additional mm -hmm. movement into the the educators plan um, mm -hmm. that that assumes none of that movement um, it may be positive it may help the district. Um, but we just don't know that yet, and we won't know that until we go through the renewal process. But but there are, there are savings that could be obtained. The the caution that you have, and why um, in New Jersey I have more self-funded uh, prescription only school districts than we have self-funded medical and prescription. And um, the reason for that is again, it's there's a lot of ups and downs. Uh, in the claims payment, it is more work. Um, it is, um, you know, depending on who the third party administrator is, it can, it can be um, uh, a little bit different than what you're used to. Um, so I'm cautious. Um, and what, what we would like to be able to do is get all the data in. Um, let's see what the December claims look like. 
and that'll give me a better indication. But uh, we, we've seen other districts where it has worked. Um, but if we look at what do we have, 560 something school districts in New Jersey, there's probably less than 20 that are uh, self funded on their own um, uh, for medical. We I'm have, assuming those are the larger district districts. They right? are the larger districts, and you Correct. would be you would fall into that. Um, but as I said, we have um, there's at least a hundred uh, school districts that have pooled together in the health insurance fund movement, which is a cooperative purchasing arrangement, um, and and that is a tool that we'll be looking at as well. Do you know the exact amount of um, that we're actually insuring, meaning the the insurer and the family number? Is there about four or five thousand, just a rough estimate, or? Um, I don't have that um, um, available, unfortunately, Frank. But I can check on that for you if you like. Right. Yeah. No, because you said we're between a thousand and four thousand nine nine nine. I just didn't know if that was just the current people who were insured, or if that's with the family members as well, spouses and children. Oh, certainly. You know what? Um, I do have. I, I can pull that up here. If you look, mm -hmm. um, you have a total of nine hundred. As of November, uh, 920, 927 uh, employees, and typically mm -hmm. um, you would expect at least two times that uh, in additional covered lives. So you're probably in the high 2000s, 2800, something like that. So 3000, okay. But I can get you an exact one from a different report, Frank, but I don't have access to. That's fine. In your recommendation, going to self-insurance, what is that threshold that you see really that it works for uh, 500 plus employees, 1,000 plus? How many really is that magic number that it actually makes sense? Um, the number of employees doesn't really drive the decision. The, the decision really is what we can get in the way of stop loss coverage. And there's a corridor uh, between expected claims and what they'll insure you at. And, and that sometimes is difficult for boards of education to um, uh, put into place. Um, you know, if, if there's a 20% corridor between expected claims and maximum liability, um, you're rolling the dice somewhat. And um, again, that's why our actuaries go through all these different models um, and they'll give you a number on, you know, what the likelihood, uh, the potential of you piercing that uh, uh, overall maximum. Well, so the model you just showed before with the regular insurance, it's showing us almost around $27 million projected for next year, which yes. is approximately $2 million more than our current value. That's correct. All right. But if going to sell funding the way you ran that model, we have a potential to save about $1.5 million. That's correct again, but it doesn't uh, take into account the, the, the most recent changes that just went into effect 1-1, one, one, Frank. Correct. One, one and seven, one, there'll be another one. That's correct. All right. And here's my last question and uh, don't take it the wrong way, but what do you think about the New Jersey state plan? Cause you did mention that. Uh, the New Jersey state plan um, uh, certainly is one of the options that we, we have to look at every single year. The one uh, uh, difficulty with that is that you, you're no longer bargaining for the benefits. Um, uh, that could be a good thing. Then uh, it could be a negative thing. Uh, but uh, we've certainly put uh, districts back into um, uh, the state plan when it made sense economically. The challenge that you have, one of the difficulties is that that renews January 1st, as opposed to your fiscal year as 7-1. So whenever you model that, you have to guess what the renewal is going to be uh, for six months of your fiscal year. Okay. But again, we, we will model all of those options and, and present them to uh, the board. Great. Well, I look forward to that. And I thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, sir. Hey, Ed. So quick question. You're saying that you wouldn't necessarily recommend self-funded for full medical and the numbers you're running there are full medical. Yes, they are. Okay. So, all right. And on top of that, that 2.7, we'd have to fund the reserves for that as well, right? So in year one, even if we got the savings, which does not include the changes in the state um, state plans, we would have to probably chunk up at least $3 million for reserves. You, uh, yes, that you would, you would be accumulating the reserves on a monthly basis uh, because you're not paying out the claims that you would only be paying paid claims, not uh, incurred, but not yet reported claims. 
And that's where that reserve comes into play. Be the fund that up front. Part uh, of that. You could you could certainly do that, but uh, uh, I'm not aware of very many districts that do that. Okay. And in terms of the uh, expected claims, wouldn't that really be, for example, you're still going to have to use someone like Horizon to to, to administer this, right? You st it's still their game. So they're going to tell you what they say, what they think expect. If, they, if you want to get uh, the coverage, the um, stop 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 gap or stop loss of coverage, they're going to tell you what they think the expected claims are, right? They will give us a claims projection based on the claims. However, what what we typically like to do, John, is is um, for example, with Horizon, I would typically use a Sun Life as the stop loss vendor, a different vendor than Horizon. That that's not their main business. Where it is for Sun Life, um, Highmark, some of the companies that specialize in stop loss, and they they can be much more aggressive and give us. Uh, uh, a reduce a reduction in that margin uh, overall. So um, while there are uh, some of Horizon's plans, they write the stop loss. Um, I, I typically, we have about 12 different carriers that we already uh, have negotiated uh, national uh, discounts with. So um, we're going to look at those. We're going to also look at Horizon. Thanks. But Horizon also allows us to write it with, uh, you know, a high mark or uh, Sun Life or, or a number of other carriers that are approved by them. Okay. I, like I said, I'm just going by, you know, prior conversations in, in prior years. And in terms of pooling, our understanding would be that, you know, these pooling funds that in terms of the size of our district, you know, it might not be beneficial to us, the size that we bring. And I, I see the medical history is a little bit, the claims history is a little bit different here, but we might not benefit from that type of uh, arrangement just because we might be someone who's in, the, in sort of a more of a driver's seat than a pooled a pooled group of um, you know in, insurers or mm -hmm. I'm sorry of of other you know school districts or or other kind of municipalities. That that is correct. Um, uh, it's a little bit more challenging for the larger groups. However, um, Lenape Regional just went into uh, the South Jersey Health Insurance Fund effective uh, last year, and one of the advantages of going in there is a, a cap on what your uh, rate action is going to be for the first two years. So there's some attractive things there, and they also pay dividends like your uh, joint insurance funds do on the property casualty side. And the other thing we heard about that was also governance. In other mm -hmm. words, we lose a certain level of control, and that's, it's not necessarily about like we have, you know, you know, whatever, we have over a thousand employees, and you, know, you said two times in terms of whatever. Sometimes a lot of the, the governance is equal. In other words, everyone has an equal sort of uh, view and they have a board and that we might lose some control. Have, has that been your experience or is that something that's not a major issue? It, that has not been a major issue in the 20 something years that uh, uh, the funds have been available. Um, you would still have the control to negotiate your benefits and the plan designs and all of that. Uh, and uh, that is not something that um, uh, the funds themselves or their professionals um, have an, any impact on. And sorry, one more question. And, and, and Frank touched on it, but the, the uh, prescription better mm -hmm. card because they gave us, a, you know, some sort of, uh, you know, a reduced premium to, you know, bring us in. I don't know if the service was so great anyway. And then, we, you know, then the next year they popped up. I think that's if I remember correctly, that's what happened. So I think yes. we went back with Horizon because I guess if you if you pull if you pull if you uh, aggregate that with the medical, I guess it was a better deal for us. Is that if I, that, just that is correct. That is correct. They gave us a discount on the medical by putting the prescription in. And again, they're making the rebates um, uh, in a fully insured arrangement. They're receiving those in and that's part of their profit. It also helps us when we're negotiating your renewal. Um, they do take that into, into an account, but you're, you're certainly not getting all of that. They're, they're adding that to their margins. I, I, can, I can imagine. Thank you. I, I know you answered some of those questions. Thank you for that. Certainly. Any other questions that I can answer? If not, we'll we'll be back in touch with you as soon as we have some more concrete information for you. And um, thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you. Ed. Thanks, Ed. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Take care. Stay safe.